Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboard. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from Akko, the JIN01 or JIN01. So this is an aluminum 65% from Akko. They have been putting out some really nice keyboards as of late. The last one that I reviewed, I believe, was the uh, wooden one. Um, this one I think follows a very similar design, but is an aluminum 65% that is preloaded with Akko Rosewood switches. Now, I did review the Akko Rosewood switch and I found it to be a deeper, thockier switch. I kind of I hesitate to use the word thocky because I think a lot of people have different ideas of what that word means. And I think thocky may mean something a little different to everybody, but I'll just go with deep. Um, I believe that the other one I reviewed, the wooden one, had piano pro switches so that one had a nice wild deep a little bit of a clacky tone but the wood really gave it a unique sound signature that's one thing um i always try to communicate you know because people ask like what switch is the thaki is well for one everyone's got a different opinion of thaki for two a switch may sound a little bit deeper in one keyboard and a little bit clacky in another one the material of the case really does come into play um, from an aluminum to say a polycarbonate to an ABS to a resin to, there's many different materials and as well as the combination or the thickness of the materials and how it's constructed is going to always make a difference in how the keyboard sounds now I'm not sure what what kind of plate this has but we're going to go ahead and open it up and take a look let's go ahead and get to what everybody's waiting for. Let's see what's in the box and get to this lovely looking keyboard. All right, so before taking a look at the keyboard, I do always like to check what's in the box first. And here we have a user manual. Um, it does look like it comes in two different languages. Oh, and speaking of QC cards, there is ours right here. So that indicates that inspector number seven, I mean, I, uh, don't really need to use my Google Translate to know that's probably inspector number seven or whatever they call them, agent number seven, that actually has done this. And then we also see that we have a 2.4 gigahertz dongle and thankfully it does have the ACO uh, branding on it. So we know, at least we can, you know, wither down if we have more than one ACO, we can figure out, you know, which one it goes to. Uh, much easier than if we come across one that's unbranded and we're like, what keyboard does this go to? So this shows us the different commands, the pre-bindings, as well as the connections. There's the Akko 2.4 gigahertz receiver. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the bag so I don't lose it. We also have a nice rubberized, very thick USB-A to USB-C cable. This is probably one of the thicker ones I've seen. Usually thick, with cables that have wires on the inside, it's going to mean a better quality um, and a lot less likelihood of it breaking or breaking easily anyway. We also have a dedicated switch puller. Uh, these are reminiscent of the IC chip pullers. A lot of people prefer these. I can use these, I, but I pretty much always use the double-sided ones, but these are nice just for pulling out the switches. These are actually you're a lot less likely to scratch, uh, say if you have a painted board, um, it's a lot less likely to scratch using these type of uh, switch pullers. We also have a dedicated key cap puller with the uh, finger hole in the middle. Give you a little bit of a leverage when pulling that, that key cap off if it might be tight. And Akko thankfully includes five extra rosewood switches, which is always appreciated. I mean, I don't know how many times you know, accidentally dropped a switch, stepped on a switch, lost a switch. Um, anything can happen with a switch. And I'm a little bit OCD to where I prefer all of my switches underneath to be the same. I rarely will make the exception and put like a clicky under the cap slot. But for the most part, I really just prefer that they all be the same. So if I, if one switch were to be lost, at least Akko includes some extra to make up for those. Um, I think that every keyboard that is hot swappable and comes preloaded should include at least 
a handful of extra switches because one never knows what can happen. I mean, when we buy switches individually, most of us will buy a little bit more than we need. So we have that extra. So it's nice to see that Akko is following along with a very good trend of including extra switches in, in the box. And here we are with the Akko JIN01. I don't know if it's pronounced JIN or it's just JIN. I'm not sure what it stands for, but I got to say, wow, that's lovely. Now, thankfully, Akko has included a dust cover, though I don't know if they ran out of the right size. I mean, it fits and that's fine. It's going to protect. It's just not as snug, but at least they included it. Whereas some keyboards, they just don't come with them. Leaving a dust cover on your keyboard when it's not in use is going to give you the longest term with your keyboard. It's going to protect it from dust, from debris, detritus in the air, getting in there, messing with either the switches, the PCB, or a combination of. So having a dust cover, if, you, if your keyboard didn't come with one and you want your keyboard to last as long as possible, I mean, even just laying you know, a sheet of plastic over it will do. But using a dust cover is a really good idea and will ensure that your keyboard is gonna last as long as it's meant to. So putting that aside, taking a look at this, wow, it's getting to the point that keyboards are becoming almost like pieces of art. And this one is just like that. I mean, we have just lovely. So this is in the Santorini colorway. Santorini is an island um, off, off of Greece in the GNC. If I'm not mistaken, um, it's known for its beauty um, and some of the buildings there, the, the, the blue tops. This is the colors of that island. I've never been there, but I've seen plenty of pictures and I've had friends that have gone there and said, oh, it's beautiful here. Wish you were here. Wish I was too. But it is really cool to see. I mean, you know, for anybody that's been there or somebody that enjoys the history, uh, I'm a bit of a history buff myself. So having ge geographically uh, designed keyboards or artistically geographically inspired, I think it's a pretty cool step. I mean, there's a space now to get a little bit more creative with keyboards. And I think we're going to be seeing, I've actually... I know about a couple of really interesting keyboards that will be coming out here in the near future that I personally never thought I'd see. So, but I've been sworn to secrecy for now until I actually get a chance to reveal. But there are some interesting keyboards still. I mean, even though we're closer to the end of the year than the beginning, we're going to see some pretty cool keyboards before the end of 2024. Anyway, we do have a lovely keycam set. I'm going to assume that this is nice up. It is a cherry profile. Let's go ahead and take a look under here. All right. So it does look like we have an FR4 plate. And here's the uh, rosewood switch. This really is a nice, it's kind of, I would almost call it like an upgraded yellow pro because it's it really kind of sounds and feels like it but it's a little bit deeper so if i had a choice honestly i'd pick this over gator on yellows and i have a few gator on yellows i mean a few <laughs> like several hundred um because that's one of my favorite linear switch and it's one of the easiest ones to kind of like throw in but now i kind of wish i could trade them in for the Akko Rosewoods, but that's neither here nor there. So taking a look at the PCB, we do have a three and five pin hot swap PCB, and it is south facing and includes the hi-fi layers. For those who don't know, that's the PET layer above the PCB with the IXPE layer above that. We do have some screw and stabilizers here. Let's go ahead and pop them out, take a look. These are the ones, if I'm not mistaken, that have TPU on the inside so it it's going to eliminate that ticking that can happen from inside of the stem now we do have lubrication on both the inside of the stem and on the elbow because those are the points where there's going to be the most friction at so it's not overly lubricated but it's definitely i've got some lubrication on my hands and if we peek on in there 
If for some reason you prefer screw and stabilizers, we have that on the PCB. So it looks like this will be a keyboard we will be coming back to in the future and throwing in some screw and stabilizers and maybe even doing a couple of mods and see what we can do with it. But because I still enjoy modding keyboards, I do know that many are now coming basically ready to go. I mean, no, no modification needed, but I still enjoy that process. Right, let's go ahead and lock these. Oh, there's the lock. These are definitely the newer stabilizers. And once we have them in place, they have a little bit of wiggle, but not so much that you think it's going to affect or create any sort of extraneous noise we don't want. Um, but we do have the option for screwing stabilizers, which is always nice. Honestly, this is when I tune keyboards, it's this is as close to what I'm aiming for a lot of times when I'm just doing a general kind of mod because it's a nice clean. And on the deeper end, but it's a clean, lovely sound. I, I like I said, it's I know people want to say creamy, foggy, marbly, but it just to me, it's pleasant. And that's that's what I like to call it. This this sound profile is what I call pleasant. It's not loud, so it's not going to be like in your face. This is raw, but you can definitely hear it because it's got that nice deep tone. I'm looking at the body of the keyboard. The finish is quite nice. Um, it has just the slightest of texture so that it wouldn't slip out of your hands, but nothing that I would come close to calling rough. I like how the that interior, I mean, it is in there just a little bit, but I think most cables are going to have no problem fitting in. But I like how it has that blue highlight there. And then we look at the bottom below here is where we get to the screws. And when we come back to it, we will open it up and take a look at the inside. But today we're going to stick stock. Let's go ahead. I forgot to... Uh, measure let me see what we've got here all right so we have die sub keycaps and the cherry profile with a 1.4 millimeters of thickness now i do believe that the power switch yep probably why they included a separate keycap and key switch puller or it's my guess anyway that because if you want to travel with it you know you want to you know turn it on or off pull off the keycap you've got the separate keycap puller that, so you could throw in your bag to carry with you if you're taking this on the road. This being a wireless keyboard, I think it's some people are personally, it's just me though. I mean, when I go out on the road, go to a client, go to meet, whatever, I do take my laptop and the keyboard, but I stick with plastic because of the weight. And my keyboard's already heavy enough. I usually have at least one or numerous notebooks in there, and sometimes even some books as well, and other electronics, battery backup, what have you. So I'm thinking of weight constraints. I don't want my bag literally dragging me down or you know me falling over when I'm standing up because it's so heavy. So I tend to stick with plastic boards when I go on the road, though I do know a lot of people, including my son. He likes his 65% um, aluminum board, which is built like a tank, and he just takes it with him everywhere. So to each their own, right? And that's one thing that I enjoy about this hobby. If there's not one right way to do mechanical keyboards, as long as you're happy, as long as it feels good to you, sounds good to you, helps you be more productive and you enjoy looking at it. Well, then no one can tell you that, you know, oh, that you need to get a different keyboard or a different switch or a different keycap set. No. It's all about enjoying what you've built, what you've bought. So we can go ahead and just flip it on real quick. Um, as the manual states, let me see if we go up on the switch. I believe we're going to be in Windows mode. Let me see if I'm correct. All right. Now, so top is Mac. So it, once we go into there, we're going into Mac wireless mode. In the middle is default, but it's plugged in mode. And on the bottom, it's wireless Windows mode. So 
we're going to stick with wired today. Go ahead and put that in the middle. Put the cap slack back on. Now, I'm loving the uh, legends on the keycaps. I'm always a big fan of bigger legends because, to me, small legends are almost like they're scared of the rest of the keycap surface. It's like, why are you hiding up in the corner? you got plenty of room covered up. And then we have almost like a calligraphy-like uh, style font for this, which just, it's just, this is, it's lovely. It's a piece of art. Honestly, um, these are the kind of keyboards that, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love using them, but I also like putting them up for display because it is, in my opinion, it's a piece of art that's functional. And there's too many ugly things nowadays in the world and to have something that inspires, that brings joy, brings happiness. I think that's a good thing. It's a positive thing. The more positivity, the better off we're all going to be. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Akko JIN01. 65% aluminum free mode mechanical keyboard. It comes with a gasket mounted FR4 plate, 3 and 5 pin hot swap compatible south facing PCB with hi fi layers, Akko rosewood switches with 5 extra switches in the box. Die sub PBT cherry keycaps measuring 1.4 millimeters in thickness. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 36 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 9 degrees. This keyboard comes weighing in at 1645 grams. It MSRPs for $119.99 before discounts on Akko's website links below. All right, so this uses uh, the Akko driver for controlling it. It's basically, um, if you ha already have it installed, you'll probably have to do an update. Um, if not, you can go to the Akko site and download the driver. Now, as we can see, we have a main layer uh, and we can remap some of the keys. We also have the option of setting key sensitivity as well as when the keyboard will go to sleep in the different wireless modes. We also see that we have an FN setting, and that's for controlling what is the function layer below. Any one of the keys in red, it will not allow you to remap, but any of the keys that are not, you can go ahead and click on them and assign them to something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign a cert to right below the tilde. Next, we have a pretty basic macro editor that allows us to record our keystrokes, and even add um, mouse events, whatever else that you need to add. And it can also be saved and mapped to function key combinations. Then we have light. The first one is the preset. So we can select from a drop-down list of the pre-selected light effects, and we can adjust them to either dazzle, which is like go through all the colors, or select a single color to go through for that light effect. Then we can select custom, which will give us the ability to do per key RGB. Um, we can actually not only save them as different effects. Um, I don't know if there's a way to call them directly from the keyboard. I think you do still have to change it unless you're on that specific layer though. In layer, they're really calling profiles layers. So you can also use a static image as the basically the inspiration it's kind of kind of pixel it out and then kind of, and use those colors in order to try to match it as best as it can this is one of the newer software that includes an ability for you to create an account on the Akko cloud site and you can share as well as download other people's macros um, custom key effects custom uh, per key RGB settings, and so on. And finally, we have the about section where we can check for updates. Obviously, we are at the latest for, uh, software update as well as the latest firmware update for this keyboard. We can select how this the software looks and if it automatically launches on boot. These mechanical keyboards just keep getting better and I just stay the same. I know, really bad. I'm just trying to be funny. Um, 
my collection of jokes are mainly dad jokes, so I'll spare everyone. I really enjoy this keyboard. I love how it looks. So it does have the same construction as the wooden keyboard I recently reviewed, the MU01, except this one is aluminum. Now that one did have that accent bar at the top. This one is aluminum, I believe the other one. I wanna say it was brass copper but i'm not sure but it has the same design though they do have different sound signatures again because of the material of the case when i come back to to open this one up and probably what i'll do is bring the mu01 and there's actually another one in this style that's coming out but with a whole different material it's not aluminum and it's not wood but we'll get to it when i receive it we'll probably open up all three of them see what we've got, maybe even do some mix and match it. I don't know, but mod them, see what kind of different sound profile we got. I've got, I think I've got enough rosewood that we can go across all three of them with the same switches so that we can kind of really compare, you know, same construction method, but different material and be able to compare them all against each other. I think it's going to be very helpful to people that are trying to decide what kind of keyboard they want. Do they want a wooden one? Do they want aluminum? Are they going to be fine with plastic? And give a sample of the same construction and design, but with different materials so that you can compare how, you know, basically the same keycaps and the same switches sound across the different materials. I think that's going to be a really good video and I think it'll help people too. Uh, more closely defined if they want an aluminum keyboard because I've actually and it surprised me at first but as I've gotten into this hobby there's not much that surprises me anymore there have been some people that have posted you know everyone told me to get this keyboard an aluminum keyboard I got it and it's it's um high pitched it's too pingy it's too clacky it's too something and but then they point to you know it's like okay well, what keyboard do you like and all the keyboards they point to the sound profiles they like is plastic and it's like well whoever recommended that didn't you know look at your list of you know i like these and i want one of these but you know they recommended aluminum because yes aluminum keyboards are coming down in price and a lot of them are now comparable if not only just a few bucks more than a very similar plastic keyboard but some people prefer plastic, whether it's, like I said earlier, for weight, for carrying, for the sound that it produces, for many number of things. Um, they could prefer plastic over aluminum, or they could prefer a resin or acrylic or a PC or wood or whatever. Um, heck, I mean, uh, what is it? One of those uh, companies recently came out with, a, I think it's called the Holy 60, that is just basically outlines i mean now personally i mean don't get me wrong i think it looks cool as heck but unless you got a like a polycarbonate clear polycarbonate you know on the inside you're just exposing that to the elements i really like this one now granted my favorite color is blue so i'm probably a little biased again akko you know comes to bat with a piece of functional art because the other one had a very um cool Japanese theme to it and this one has a Greek theme to it Santorini um, the Aegean Sea beautiful part of the world to, to look down and just think of a peaceful beach being on the beach with the sun out and you know the sound of the seagulls the smell of the salt water just for a minute will take me away and usually help my my thought process to kind of figure out an issue that I might be having because I stepped away from it for a second and it let, you know, my subconscious take over and then it found a solution and then, oh, I had a moment of peace and now I know the next step I got to take. So I definitely appreciate having an artistic keyboard. Anyway, I do hope that you guys enjoyed the review. Um, if you have any questions about this keyboard, anything that you'd like to see me do when I come back to it, please leave them down in the comment section below. I, I do my best to answer as many comments as possible. Uh, sometimes I do get inundated, so it takes me a little bit longer, but I will get to you if you ask me a question. I appreciate each and every one of you. So I wanna wish you all a wonderful day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and Keyboard on.